Healthy masculinity. What is it and how can you develop it? In this video, we're going to look at the three essential aspects of masculine energy. And we're going to explore masculinity using three images, the sword, the shield and the pen. We're going to use these three images of the sword, the shield and the pen as symbols of the three essential aspects of masculine energy. We'll also look at how these three different aspects of the masculine energy interact and interrelate and why it's vitally important for all three aspects of the masculine to be developed in order to express masculinity in healthy ways. In addition, we'll also touch on feminine qualities and how these relate to the development of healthy masculinity. So healthy masculinity, what is it? I'd like to offer a unique way of looking at masculinity, at least certainly one I've never come across before. And this way of looking at masculinity is having three main different aspects. Because often what some people are labeling as toxic masculinity is simply one aspect of masculine energy that's out of balance, is not balanced by other aspects of masculine energy. So what I'd like to try in order to make this information practical, useful and accessible to you so you can actually do something with it or hopefully be able to do something with it is use three images as symbols of these different aspects of the masculinity. And the three images I'd like to use as symbols are the sword, the shield and the pen. And what I'll do is I'll use these three images as I say as as symbolizing different aspects of masculine energy and then we can look at how they combine, how they, how they interact and what happens when there's a lack of one or the other of these energies and because there's an imbalance and how we can restore the balance. So we have a bit of a journey to go on so stay with me but by the time you come out of it my intention is that you have a, a workable model for understanding masculinity and how to, how to cultivate a healthier, more balanced sense of masculine self, whatever type of body you actually happen to inhabit. But many women are also looking at how to bring in masculine energy, though they may not be calling it masculine energy. Many women in the workplace find themselves called upon to express masculine aspects of themselves. And I'd like to start with a story from some years ago. This was quite a few decades ago, in fact. This was around about the time when the Spice Girls were out doing their thing and had been going for a while. And as I was on, in, in a taxi on the way to Glasgow Airport, and as we were on the, the motorway heading towards the, the airport, there was this boy racer car went whizzing past very noisily, well above the speed limit. And it was a classic boy racer type car with a flashy, noisy, kind of go faster boy racer car, as it's known. And I said to the taxi driver, oh, these boy racers, you know, this, ca this car went zooming past. The taxi driver surprised me by saying, that was no boy racer. That was actually a young woman driving that car. He says, really? He says, yeah. He says, ever since the Spice Girls, this has become more and more common. You see more and more of that, he's saying. So, oh, wow. And I remember thinking at the time, well, that would be a bit unfortunate as it is women are learning to embody what's been traditionally known as masculine energy if they end up doing the same daft things that, that, that I did and lots of other guys did when we were going through the adolescent phase of developing masculine energy because masculine energy can go through a, a process of maturing and it starts off fairly adolescent and show offy and all these kind of things but then begins to calm down and mature we learn to, to express more mature forms of masculine energy. But unfortunately, it's the more immature ones that are more obvious, <laughs> easier to copy and easier to pick up on. I can't say whether that was an expression of masculine energy in that young woman that went zipping past us in the, in the motorway or with some kind of expression of feminine energy. So I'd be curious to know what other people think. Do you see that? Um, to me, it looked like adolescent masculine energy, uh, immature, needing to develop. But how, would it, how does that look to women? Did it look like an expression of feminine energy? Because you can argue that in some ways, every individual needs to have some kind of way of balancing their masculine and feminine energy 
in order to find a more complete balance within themselves. However, if we keep, if we keep fudging the labels about what's masculine and what's feminine, it confuses the issue even more. So I'm just going to stay with the traditional definitions of what's masculine for the, for the sake of this video so we can get some kind of clarity on it. And it doesn't mean that I'm not fundamentally acknowledging the importance of the feminine energy too. These days, women are often called upon or find themselves taking on roles which were traditionally thought of as masculine, or finding themselves therefore needing to call upon the necessary qualities to perform those roles and be involved in those activities. And since those roles were traditionally thought of as masculine, we can think of the qualities needed as the, what are called traditional masculine qualities, because everybody has these core energies within them, and it's a matter of finding out how to express them. And so therefore you could say that women need as much to understand the expression of healthy masculine energy and how to do that as, as males do. So there's a learning opportunity for all of us where we identify ourselves as male or female to be able to handle masculine energy and to express it appropriately. Most men in coming to terms with their own masculine energy go through a process of maturing their masculine energy may start off as fairly adolescent and posturing, showing off, being a bit wild and out of control. And then we learn to chill out and have <laughs> to balance it. Masculine energy becomes a bit more understated. It becomes more like of a quiet confidence and less of a flashy show-offy thing. So I wonder then if a woman or his core energy is, is feminine, begins to integrate masculine energy, whether they also need to go through a maturation process. Initially, the energy is kind of adolescent <laughs> and a bit wild, and then begin to balance and mellow it out and get more into the mature qualities of the masculine. Certainly as a, a male having worked on and worked with process of maturing my own masculine energy, I can say that took quite a few years <laughs> to go through that. They learn to be somewhat tolerant as, of males as they go through this learning experience is somewhat recognized. Well, it's just a phase that people go through. You know, need to be a bit tolerant of women if they're going through a process of maturing masculine energy. It might not come out <laughs> very balanced in the beginning and need to maybe to mellow out. And, um, and that takes time and experience to do that. It's just a fact of life that it just takes practice. Also helps to have a bit of knowledge and a bit of ideas about what masculine energy really is. So let's get in to the three symbols of the sword, the shield, and the pen, and what they represent. So the first image I'd like to offer you is the symbol of the sword. That to me represents a sense of purpose and direction, which is essential for masculine energy to function. So ideally, the sense of purpose will be a noble purpose, but it might not be to begin with, certainly during the adolescent stage, so let's just assume that the, the purpose that somebody is yearning and moving towards is some form of noble purpose which they're working on uh, and refining. And, uh, but anyway, that sense of purpose needs to be there as a, a primary element of the masculine. Then the person working with that masculine energy needs to work as to come up with that purpose. They may do so in conjunction with the, the family they grew up in or maybe influenced that way. But ultimately, it needs to be a purpose that they can get behind and feel it's, it's essentially them. They can feel that it's genuinely an expression of themselves and not done just out of trying to get approval of others. It needs to be the purpose that that masculine self wants to express, not because of approval of others, not because of what others have said or done. What others tell us and inform us can help awaken that sense of purpose, but nobody ultimately can tell that masculine self what purpose is theirs. And that's part of the maturing of masculine energy is to discover a purpose. It can be an ongoing lifelong task. I see, is, I see the sword as being the symbol of sense of purpose and direction of the masculine energy. The sword is essentially representing the energy of will, will and purpose through the masculine. It represents a sense of direction being in a mission and its ability to be self-disciplined, 
not get distracted but stay focused. It's very much about focus, staying on the task at hand. Uh, allows us to cut through obstacles, to keep going and overcome challenges. Uh, it is about being deliberate and committed to a task. We could also say the sword energy is about vision. And as you know, there's this old saying that where there's no vision, the people perish. Individuals and society as a whole suffers when there's no real vision of sense of direction and purpose. However, there's another side of that, of that old saying, and you could also say that where there's no people, the vision perishes, which means that when somebody's too strong and overbalanced on the sword energy, and doesn't have the other masculine qualities that will help create a sense of brotherhood that gets other people involved in the particular purpose or goal or allows the person to harmonize their purpose with the purpose of others, then basically they're on their own and if they're unable to fulfill that purpose without involving others, then their purpose, their vision will perish. So that's why, as well as saying well, there's no vision the people perish, I like to say, well, well, there's no people, the vision will perish, because that's one of the lessons of masculine energy, that it needs to be balanced with the other aspects of masculine energy in order to function in a, in a balanced and healthy way, in a way that's effective and actually gets things done. It's another more modern old saying, you might say, you know, nobody gets rich on their own or nobody succeeds on their own. And that in order to achieve a goal, we need to be able to bring others in and be able to connect with others. And the sword energy on its own isn't usually enough to do that. It usually takes other aspects of the masculine for a man to be able to bond with, with other people in order to achieve a specific goal. Also, a person with too much sword energy can become excessively compulsive, driven, and just really out of balance with themselves. And not living a healthy lifestyle that enables them to maintain themselves as a healthy person physically, emotionally and, and mentally so that they, they can, can function well. So ultimately they become unproductive because they're too, so driven that they drive everybody else away. <laughs> so that's the, the, the downside of sword energy if it's not balanced out with other energies. They, bec they become so driven that they drive other people away, or they grab hold of any, of any purpose that they can find to hand, becoming the best bank robber in town, or the best pickpocket in the area, or whatever, and who can to any kind of purpose for the sake of having a purpose. Excessive sword energy can turn into somebody be obsessive and compulsive. They set about fulfilling a purpose, no matter who that purpose hurts, and don't take into account the other aspects of of masculine energy that are needed to, to harmonize it. Two other aspects of masculine energy, the, the shield and the pen, help to balance out the sword energy. So let's look at these next. Let's first, let's first look at the shield energy. And this, I'm using the image of the shield to symbolize protection and being a provider. Before I go too much into this, I want to mention the fact that the masculine needs to handle the shield without dropping the sword. And we'll come back to this later because it's really important. Becoming a provider can be a very fulfilling role for the masculine. It can be fulfilled through providing a business environment which employs people or for providing for a family and the like. So this aspect of the masculine tends to protect others and is willing to take action in order to do so. So because it's a masculine quality, it's not likely to sit back and put up with injustice, even if it's other people who are, who are experiencing the injustice, the, the masculine quality will tend to take action and do something about it. I see the shield, this protection and providing energy as being a, an aspect of the of heart, of the heart quality expressed through masculinity. Whereas the sword is like the will and purpose energy, the shield is the heart energy. It's more a loving, compassionate, empathic energy expressed through masculinity. It allows for a sense of relationship to others, brotherhood, empathy, uh, mutual understanding, kinship. And so this helps masculine energy be more affable. <laughs> the shield can also help the masculine relate to others in ways which will help clarify or fulfill 
the mash find purpose and goals in meaningful ways. This helps the mash going to use strength and power to help others or for the greater good rather than using strength and power to dominate or subjugate others. The shield energy helps balance the sword aspect of the masculine and helps it to become grounded um, like into a family, a tribe or a social system so that masculine doesn't get too caught up in the, the kind of aloof go alone energy of the sword. The sword on its own can be too much about purpose or power for its own sake. And uh, so the shield helps the masculine energy to become directed towards helping and benefiting society as a whole rather than being self-serving. And in this way, the, the, the shield energy can help the masculine to refine and even redefine a sense of purpose. However, <laughs> remember that the masculine needs to learn to handle the shield without dropping the sword. The masculine needs to keep hold of the sword energy too, or it'll lose its core essence. And because um, ultimately masculine purpose comes from within and must meet the approval of the masculine core essence. It can be shaped by the shield energy as the sword and shield work in partnership. However, it's, the sword is ultimately what is decisive in battle and in life. That's why we mustn't just drop the sword. If the masculine gets too absorbed in shield energy, the person risks losing the, the ability to act independently you know, of our circumstances and gets overly swayed and overly concerned by the opinions of others. You know, there's a, there's a time to fit in, but there's also a time to break out. And that usually calls for sword energy. This breaking out calls for sword energy. When the masculine loses the sword, then the person loses their core sense of purpose. So it's like the, the, the shield shape on purpose, but it isn't necessarily going to, it doesn't usually define the purpose. So it's really the, the masculine in a core is the, is the real birthright of the masculine, and it's the ultimate arbiter of masculine purpose. It's good to bring in the values of the shield to help shape that purpose, but ultimately it's the masculine core needs to give its approval or not, whether that's a genuine masculine purpose or not, and where it fits. Many men will get very stoic if they see being a provider as their main purpose in life. They might put up with a job that they don't like or even hate. They might do that day after day, week after week, year after year, in order to provide for their family. This is, this is really like an, an act of love, though it might you know, it seem that way to the people being provided for. When a man with a masculine core energy does this, he feels like he's doing the right thing. Even if it's making him really unhappy, he might feel miserable, but he feels like, I'm doing the right thing, I'm being a provider, that's what I'm supposed to do, I'll keep at it, I'll be very stoic and things will work out. But what often happens is that the, the partner becomes unhappy too, files for divorce. So this man who feels like he was doing the right thing all along, suddenly finds himself facing an unexpected and unwanted divorce and feels devastated by that. Now perhaps these men have simply made the same mistake I made and they dropped the sword. And I explain what I mean by that because I dropped the sword in my marriage and I ended up in divorce because of that. It might have happened anyway, but who knows. So for example, um, one of the things I came to realize after my divorce, I dropped the sword during the relationship. And it wasn't being true but in my masculine core. I'd become divorced from myself. I'd become divorced from my core purpose before the divorce from my wife actually happened. Before the divorce from, from my wife was more or less forced upon me, I'd become divorced from my own inner core, my masculine core. And looking back in it, I then could realize that the part of my unhappiness at the time was that I was being stoic. And I was living out aspects of being a provider that were just not really working and that we were struggling too much in the relationship. And uh, I really ought to have used the sword energy to break free and to break out of um, that situation. And at least, you know, did much more to question the fundamentals of the situation and, and looked for ways of uh, having a very different lifestyle. But as I say, I had dropped my sword and it didn't really occur to me to, <laughs> to pick it up and now it was time for the sword. I thought it was time to put away the sword and it's never really time to put away the sword. Because um, you can only turn a sword into a plowshare if you've got a sword. 
<laughs> still needs sword energy <laughs> to become a plowshare. This brings us to the subject of the pen. The pen symbolizes intelligent creative action. The masculine needs to be able to face existing circumstances and go beyond them, either by inventing something, becoming innovative, blazing a trail into new territory, or this needs to be able to come up with an invention, might become an urge to migrate, build something. This urge has been one of the main drivers of uh, human evolution and human progress for eons. This uh, impulse, this energy of creativity, this urge to improve things, change things, invent things, discover things, explore things. It's been a, the mainstay in many ways all of, of human evolution and the development of human society. So the pen is about the inventive, creative aspect of masculine energy. The pen helps, helps to shape both the shield and the sword energy and help it to be expressed in skillful and effective ways. For example, if we want to achieve a specific goal, then the pen helps us to get ideas and a sense of timing so that things can proceed in the, the best way possible. The pen also symbolizes artistry, ideas. It helps us to do what we need to do with more flourish. The masculine can otherwise become a bit too serious and overburdened. So this pen can help us be spontaneous and come up with a solution right in the moment. It adds these elements of spontaneity, creativity to our, to our lives and helps lighten things up. The playful energy of the pen helps offset the tendency to get overly serious in, in the masculine because we, we can tend to get too caught up in our purpose and we can get grim and determined to achieve our goals. The pen not only helps us achieve our goals in skillful ways, it actually helps us to have more fun while we're doing so. So we can achieve our goals more effectively by activating the pen energy within ourselves. We can also have a lot more enjoyment of fulfilling our goals in the process. And the pen energy also makes us more skillful in the kind of relationships we create, and more successful and playful in relationships too, which helps enhance those relationships. Someone who gets too caught up in pen energy can end up just hiding out in the basement, the basement of their parents or the basement of life, playing games that have no real ongoing purpose or direction. So they, they become overly, overly involved in the playful and no particular ability to create relationships and no particular ability to fulfill a purpose. So, that, so we need the pen energy, but it needs to be balanced with the other aspects of masculine energy so we can express healthy masculinity. It's important not to get too literal about these symbols and confuse the symbol for what it's being used to represent. So the pen can be anything which allows us to develop and express an intelligent and creative way of relating to, uh, relating to the world and achieving our goals. It could be, a pen in a sense could be a computer keyboard or a set of tools used by a sculptor or, or a brushes used by an artist. But it's more than that. It's the, the, the pen is also symbolizing um, not only those things, but it's, it's the primal energy, which is then being expressed through the tools we're using to be creative. The primal energy is the energy of creativity, really about creative living, solving problems and, and going beyond current circumstances, going beyond life as it is, going beyond the situation as it is and tapping into the potential and furthering that potential through finding something new and unique that we can offer to the situation to benefit ourselves and benefit our own family and benefit the, the tribe metaphorically and to benefit others. So it's tapping into that creative juice that transforms situations and transforms relationships. Many societies and cultures trying to find a way to describe the fundamental energies that are active within a human being. And some describe it as masculine and feminine. Some describe it as yin and yang. Some describe it as Shakti and Shiva. Or you can use a more modern, like a Jungian term, like uh, you can describe the polarity within a human being as introverted and extroverted. 
Now, um, there's also a school of thought that says that ultimately a human being, in order to find balance, needs to find a way of integrating and harmonizing both of those aspects of themselves, however you actually happen to describe it, whatever labels we put on it. So ultimately, healthy masculine may need to integrate aspects which uh, within a culture might be thought of as pure feminine energy and perhaps somebody who identifies themselves as masculine may need to have aspects of feminine develop within them in order to be balanced. Once somebody who's identifying themselves as male integrates the different aspects of masculinity, they're in a far better position to then be able to integrate what were traditionally thought of as feminine qualities into themselves without becoming emasculated in the process. Somebody who's male who's out of balance in their masculinity and, and hasn't harmonized the different aspects of it is much more susceptible to flipping over and becoming becoming emasculated and becoming too feminine because and losing their masculine core that they already developed and there's no need to lose that core in order to integrate the feminine what then is healthy masculinity healthy masculinity is being able to blend the three energies the sword energy the shield energy and the pen energy to be able to cultivate those qualities to harmonize them and balance them and learn to use them skillfully and effectively in our lives it's the interplay of these three energies, the, the sword, the shield, and the pen, and what this, these images symbolize. So it's the presence or lack of these energies that largely determine how well a masculine energy expresses in a person's life. Because that determines how balanced the person is in the expression of masculine energy, and whether they get caught up in one extreme or the other. So each of these aspects of masculinity interconnect and they interweave as we develop our character. Now the sword gives us a sense of purpose and helps us to be focused and deliberate. The shield helps us to become socialized and be able to flow and to be affable. And it can also help us get together a suitable group of people to, if we need to um, uh, others to help with our purpose or we can it helps us to join in with a suitable group of people or join in on a shared purpose. The pen helps to be creative and to be smart and get organized around the specifics and find the best way to achieve our purpose and achieve our goals in life. If we are lacking in any one of these aspects, then our expression of the masculine energy will likely be better balanced and not as fulfilling as it could be. Do you feel like any aspect of the masculine is undeveloped in you? Um, do you feel like you've got enough of the sword energy? Or you, do you feel like you get enough of the shield energy? Or do you feel like you get enough of the, of the pen energy? Or do you feel that some aspect is missing? Please comment below and did you feel that like you did what I did and dropped your sword at one point? So therefore it can be really good to look at what's missing from your expression of the masculine energy and look to ways to develop that aspect. So I, I hope you find this helpful in it. You can check out some of my other videos if you're interested in ways to be your best self and comment below if there's any specific topics you'd like me to cover or suggestions or ideas that arise within you about healthy masculinity and how to express it. Thank you.